on our communications channel. And we're going to be sharing today uh, some scripture, and we're going to be sharing, I believe, some victories and some great news, some good news. You know, boy, we hear so much bad news. We want some good news. And we're going to have some good news. And uh, let me uh, talk to you about a little bit of good news that I want us to be uh, sure and talk about, and that is in reference to uh, some good news that we have. And uh, we thank the Lord for that, and uh, we thank the Lord for this good news we're going to play for you here in just a moment. Here we go. A crooked politician. Yes, they are. Won't listen to our voice. But God does. They don't like the likes of Sarah. I like Sarah. Don't want us to have a choice. The TV news insults us. They lie about what we say. They sold their soul for a lie. They'll face the music someday. We are a Christian nation. Yes, we are. No matter what is said. They took prayer out of our schools and teach our children that God is dead. But he is not. Spending away our future on things we'll never use. Can't stay on this slippery slope of this power and abuse. We gotta take back America, put her back in her place. Raise old glory, tall and proud, wave it right, right in their face. face. Yes, we are. Stand for the Constitution. Stand for the Bill of Rights. Those rights. Benjamin, Thomas, and George expect us to stand and fight. Benjamin, Thomas, and George, they're in heaven now. And they expect us day is coming. to stand and fight. They're going to hear what we say. Yes, they are. They'll face their day of judgment come the next election day. We'll put somebody in there who will govern us with truth. This time they're gonna listen or they'll get shipped out too. We gotta take back America, put her back in her place. Raise old glory, tall and proud, and wave it right in their Oh, glory. Stand for the Constitution. Stand for the Bill of Rights. Benjamin, Thomas, and George expect us to stand and fight. We got to take back America. Yes, we are. Put her back in her place. Raise old glory, tall and proud. Wave it right in their face. I'll stand for the Constitution. I'll stand for the Bill of Rights. Because Benjamin, Thomas, and George expected me to stand and fight. Benjamin, Thomas, and George, they're in heaven, enjoying their heavenly rewards, and uh, they expect us to stand and fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, fight we will, and we have a great sword that we fight with, and that's the Word of God. Let me just share with you from God's holy Word. God said, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. 
Nevertheless, he said, I have somewhat against you because you have left your first love. Ladies and gentlemen, we have left our first love as a nation. And we're going to look at the Word of God about what he says about that. You see, when those people came over here from Europe, they were escaping tyranny, and they wanted to come to freedom. And they came across the ocean on some little bitty boats. They weren't ships. They were just little boats. Many of them died on the way, but those that managed to live through the voyage, landed on what is now the United States of America, and they got down on their knees as soon as they hit land, and they said, we're going to declare and swear a covenant. This is our birth certificate, ladies and gentlemen, the Mayflower Compact. The Mayflower Compact says three things. When they got down on their knees, they said, we are here Number one, for the glory of God. And number two, for the advancement of the Christian faith. And number three, for the establishment of a righteous body politic. Those were the three things. That was the threefold cord that tied this nation together. To the honor and glory of God the advancement of the Christian faith, and the establishment of a righteous body politics. We have certainly come a long way, the wrong way. The Word of God, though, says, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first works, else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place. God says three things there, folks. We talked about threefold government. We have an executive, a judicial, and a legislative. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, according to the Bible. There are three that bear record in heaven. And a threefold cord is hard to break. The reason our nation is in trouble is not because the cord has been broken, but because it's been separated. We have talked about the separation of church and state, which is a falsehood. When we separate church and state, we do so to our demise. Well, I want to share with you today some very exciting good news. Of course, the good news is that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for mine, he paid for my sins and earned my way to go to heaven. I want to say to you, if you're out there today, I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you understand. The Bible says if you acknowledge that Jesus is God, not Buddha, not Allah, not Muhammad, not somebody else, but if you acknowledge that Jesus is God, and you acknowledge that there's nothing you can do to earn your way to heaven, that you cannot do enough good things. No matter how much good you do, it won't earn your way to heaven. And then the third thing you must do is not only acknowledge Jesus as God and acknowledge that you can't earn your way to heaven, but you must invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life. Ladies and gentlemen, when I die, I'm going to heaven. Not because I'm a Baptist, not because I'm a Southern Baptist, not even because I am an evangelical Christian. But I'm going to heaven because I acknowledge Jesus as God and I've asked him to forgive me of my sins and help me to understand there's nothing I can do to earn my way to heaven. But I can indeed and will indeed Go to heaven because I've invited Jesus in my heart and in my life. And ladies and gentlemen, we must, as Revelation says, we must remember. And quite often and quite a few times in the past, I've said, boy, I hope people, when they come to election time, I hope they'll remember. 
I hope they'll remember where we came from. I hope they'll remember what those politicians have done. And so we were talking on the phone with Gary S. Paxton and Jim Lusk and some other fellows one time talking about that, and I made the statement two or three different times in our conversations that I hope those people will remember in November because in November is when we do the big election. And I said two or three times while on the telephone, I, I just hope people will remember in November. And Gary Paxton and those guys said, you know, Wiley, that would make a good song. So we wrote a song about that, and I want to play it for you now because I'm one of the uh, writers and singers of it. <laughs> Not a very good singer, but I do believe it was written because of the mightiness of Almighty God. Revelation chapter 2 says, Remember, we just heard a song that said, We need to take back America for God. And the way we do it is to have a good memory. So let us listen to this song and Think about what's going to happen in November. You know, November is not too far away. So you refused to listen when we told you we were mad. You shoved your health scare down our throats, pretended we were glad. We weren't. Well, you've got a rude awakening coming come the next election. We're going to let you know that we're fed up with all of this rejection. We'll remember in November all the lies you tried to feed us. We'll, we'll remember, remember in November you act yeah, like we'll you don't I'll need us. It. We're fed up with your arrogance. You're going to fall like rotten timber. Timber! We will. Yeah. Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Yeah. All across the nation. Yeah. All around. Of anger just get higher. Yet you pretend we don't count and add more fuel to the fire. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, enough is enough. We won't take it anymore. When November rolls around, we're going to kick you. Out of the door. We'll remember in November. Yes, we all will. The lies you tried to feed us. We'll remember in November. You act like you don't need us. We're fed up with your arrogance. You're going to fall like rotten timber. You'll join the ranks of the unemployed. We'll remember in November. We're going to vote you out. Get a job, take that, yeah. Take that, get a job, get a job, get a job. Well, we will remember in November, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're going to remember from whence we came. 
We're going to remember how you voted, Mr. Politician and Mrs. Politician, in the House and in the Senate and in the Supreme Court and in the White House. We're going to remember how you voted. We're going to remember what you did. We're not going to overlook it. And we're going to vote you out. We're going to remember November. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you today, I am excited because there's a lot of good things happening. First of all, let me share with you a, another victory. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Another victory for Jesus and the good guys. Today, the United States Supreme Court SCOTUS has issued its opinion in the much-anticipated case. Folks, we've heard about this case for a long time. It's the Susan B. Anthony List versus Dry House. Justice Clarence Thomas delivered the opinion for a unanimous court Folks, that means everybody. <laughs> they all voted for it, for a unanimous court finding in favor of the pro-life group, Susan B. Anthony List, SBA. The court ruled that SBA and co-petitioner COAST, C-O-A-S-T stands for Coalition Opposed to Additional Spending, and taxes. The court ruled that they have standing to challenge an Ohio election statute under which they had been threatened with prosecution for holding members of Congress responsible for their voting record. That in itself is a ridiculous thing. They were going to try to hold these folks responsible and threaten them because they wanted to hold the politicians accountable. The case began when Susan B. Anthony publicized. That's what we do here, folks. We publicize how people vote on the Wiley Drake Show. We publicize what people do. By the way, we went to court today or not court, but we went to the supervisors' meeting today, and I let them know that we know we're not getting satisfaction in the court, but we're going to take it to the court of public opinion. If you have a situation where you want the whole world to know about it, bring it to yours truly. We'll put it on the Wiley Drake Show. We don't care if they threaten us. We'll tell the whole world what's going on. But this case began when Susan B. Anthony publicized the voting records of members of Congress who voted in favor of Obamascare. Obamascare. Better known as uh, Affordable Care Act. It's not affordable and it doesn't care. Despite the taxpayer-funded abortion, how can something be a caring plan when it wants to kill babies? What's wrong with that picture? Despite the taxpayer-funded abortion that Obama put into place, Barry Satoro, a.k.a. Barack Hussein Obama, SBA's political opponents claimed that statements such as this, shame on Steve Dryhouse, Dryhouse voted for taxpayer-funded abortion. They were false, they said, and violated Ohio's election law. How can the truth violate the law? Faced with the threat of prosecution, small bit of the uh, Susan B. Anthony list challenged that law. The lower courts ruled that there was no current threat of prosecution. That was a lie. Susan B. Anthony challenged the law. The lower court ruled that there was no current threat of prosecution and that Susan B. Anthony lacked standing. They always do that. They lacked standing to bring the challenge. Today, 
the United States Supreme Court ruled another victory for Jesus and the good guys. It ruled in favor of Susan B. Anthony, finding that on issue of actual injury required for standing, Susan B. Anthony had demonstrated a credible threat of enforcement of the law against them. And so SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States, said this, and I quote, This decision is a victory for the SBA, Susan B. Anthony List, and for pro-life advocates everywhere, comments Dana Cody. And that, of course, is from Life Legal Defense Foundation. She is a president and executive director, and we hope, Dana, in the near future, you come on here and clarify this a little clearer for us as an attorney. Today, the justices acknowledged the harm that occurs when the free speech is chilled by the threat of prosecution. Susan B. Anthony has won the opportunity to challenge Ohio's election law and thereby to speak the truth about elected leaders in the future. From the opinion, quote, and denying prompt judicial review would impose a substantial hardship on petitioners, forcing them to choose between refraining from core political speech on the one hand or engaging in that speech and risking their costly commission proceedings and criminal prosecution on the other hand. In ruling in favor of Susan B. Anthony, SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, overturned the Sixth Circuit ruling regarding the actual injury requirement for Article III standing and remanded the case for determination of the remaining issues in the case. Another victory, ladies and gentlemen, for Jesus and the good guys. Another victory for Jesus and the good guys. Somebody say, hallelujah. Somebody say, praise God the Lord. And we do say hallelujah and praise the Lord. Another victory for Jesus and the good guys today on my timeline on my Facebook. By the way, you're welcome to go to my Facebook, Wiley Drake, or to my Twitter, Wiley Drake. You're certainly welcome to tweet me. I used to say Twitter me, and my kids explained to me, no, Twitter is the function. Tweet is what you do. So, Tweet me on Twitter and uh, let me know what you think. But if you go to my Facebook, you will see a picture of a beautiful, beautiful young lady, Justina Pelletier. And you've seen pictures of her before, and the pictures weren't very flattering because she was incarcerated. She was in jail. She was being harmed. She was being hurt. The picture that's on my timeline on Facebook now, though, is a beautiful, beautiful, smiling from ear to ear picture of Justina Pelletier. And the reason Justina is smiling is because after a long period of time, being punished and separated from her family, they have ruled now that she can go home. So Justina Pelletier is another victory for Jesus and the good guys. Justina is one of the good guys. Liberty Council is one of the good guys. Pat Mahoney is one of the good guys. Justina is one of the good guys for Jesus. And she's going to get to go home. And it's another victory for Jesus and the good guys. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of good things are happening. Susan B. Anthony, the Supreme Court ruled in our favor. 
the people that were holding Justina captive have ruled in our favor to let her go home. And we praise God for that. And so some good things are happening. And by the way, there's some other good things coming up as well that are going to happen. And we're fighting some more battles in the Supreme Court. We're fighting more battles in many places. We're fighting for the kids who are being taken away from their parents unrighteously and illegally. And we're fighting. And you know how we're fighting? We're fighting with truth. Oh, we've tried to fight in the courts and we couldn't win. You can't get justice in the court system, folks. The court system is an unjust system. But we can take the case, your case, anyone's case, we can take that case to the court of public opinion. If you would like to take your case, I don't care what the case is about. Listen, I'm not an attorney. I don't want to be an attorney. I wouldn't be an attorney if they paid me. But the bottom line is, folks, you're not going to get satisfaction with an attorney or with the court system. The only way to get satisfaction is if you have the attorney, not an attorney, not some attorney, but the attorney that is talked about in this book. You see, this book, the Holy Bible says, Jesus Christ is our advocate. Now, folks, the word advocate was an old English word that meant what we call an attorney. In fact, if you look in the uh, equivalent to the Yellow Pages in London and you're looking for help in the law, you will find in the beginning of the book, under the A's, you will find the term advocate. And when you find the term advocate, you will see that an advocate in English language is an attorney, what we call an attorney. And so we, the Bible says, in that book called the Bible, it says, you and I, as Christians, have an advocate with the Father. God is judge, but we, the Bible says, have an attorney, an advocate, and our advocate is not a human being. Our advocate is not in a law office. Our advocate is in heaven. Our advocate is none other, according to the word of God, None other than Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. That's why the Bible says, and the theme for this program is, from Micah chapter 6, verse 8, and Matthew 23, 23, we use those two verses as our theme. And both of those verses in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, and Matthew 23, 23, say three things. Do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. Justice. Did you notice what's at the top of the list? Did you notice what our Hispanic friends say as numero uno? Number one. Number one on the list of the three is justice. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have anything if you don't have justice. God has given us justice, and God has given us rights. Our Constitution and our laws, the rule of law, and all those things protect our rights. But ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution didn't give me First Amendment rights. The Constitution protects those. The Constitution didn't give me Second Amendment rights, or Third, or Fourth, or anywhere else. God gave me those rights. And man wrote the law and put the law forth to protect those rights. The Bible says God gave me life. 
liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You see, Jesus said, God gives us life. And God gives us liberty. Jesus said, I'll give you real liberty. I'll give you freedom that the world can't give you. And so we have life given to us from God. We have liberty given to us from God. And we have the privilege to pursue happiness. Why? Because God wants us to be happy. And because God wants us to pursue happiness. The Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and the rule of law is man's attempt to protect those rights that God has already given us. But they weren't given to us by the Constitution of the Bill of Rights. They're protected by them, but not given to us. And so, we have some great news, folks. We have the attorney. We have the top attorney in all of the universe. Jesus Christ is not only my Lord and my Savior and my brother, but he's my attorney. He is my attorney. And he goes before the judgment seat of Almighty God to plead my case. I don't know about you, but I'm happy. I got a good, a lot, a good attorney. I have a great advocate. His name is Jesus Christ. So we've got a lot to be happy about. we got a lot to be happy about because there was another victory for Jesus and the good guys. The Supreme Court ruled in our favor. And the courts ruled in the favor of our dear sister, Justina Pelletier, and let her go home. We have some great, great victories already and more to come. By the way, coming up in just a few days, coming up on the 31st, we have an organization in Washington, D.C. Now, a lot of people say nothing good comes out of Washington. Well, that's just wrong. There are some great things that come out of Washington. First of all, this show, the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., has been coming out of Washington since the year 2000. That's good. It brings you this television program and this radio program, and that's good coming out of Washington. Something else that comes out of Washington, there's an organization there on G Street in Washington, D.C., called the Family Research Council. Their motto is based on the Bible as well, and that comes good out of Washington. Their motto is faith, family, and freedom in that order. Faith, family, and freedom, ladies and gentlemen. Those are good things coming out of Washington. And coming out with faith, family, and freedom is a program for lack of a better term, a process that has two words and one number. And those two words and that number is the word call, the number two, and the word fall. Call to fall. That comes out of the Family Research Council. And their principle of call to fall is based on 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Comes out of the Bible and comes out of Washington. And on the 29th day of June, we're going to have a great call to fall fellowship and remembering of what God has done. You see, there's almost 2 million people that have signed up for the call to fall. Well, what is the call to fall? If you'd like to know more about it, you can go to the website. C-A-L-L, -L, the number two, and F-A-L-L, -L, calltofall.com. Calltofall.com is a prayer that has been written. It's not out of the scripture, but it's based on the scripture. The prayer is written based on many scriptures, 
but primarily based around 2 Chronicles 7.14. All of you know that, but this prayer says this, and this is what we pray every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, every time we have a service at this church that it's my privilege to be the pastor now 26 years, every time we have service, we pray this prayer. And I'm going to pray that prayer for you right now. And I would ask that you would listen to the words of it and adopt it to your prayer life. And here's what it says. I will answer. God's call to fall. On my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. That is the call to fall prayer. I would encourage you to encourage your pastor and your leaders, your deacons, your elders, your bishops, whoever you have in your church, I would encourage you to encourage them to use the call to fall. Now, if you're listening to us on television and radio, I would also encourage you to go to the website, calltofall.com, and there you can join. Now, they're not going to ask you for money. Uh, they're not going to try to sell you something. What they're going to do is put your email down, and once in a great while, you will get an email with a prayer request in it. It'll not be begging for money. It'll not be browbeating you. But if you join the Call to Fall online, you put your name and email in there, and you will be joined to the, li the list, the number of 1,700,000 people who have joined the Call to Fall. And I am very proud as a Californian. Now, most of you know I talk funny, so I'm not a native Californian. I'm originally from Arkansas. That's why I still talk a little funny. But I've lived in California most of my life. Many of you know that last November I became 70 years of age. Most of that 70 years I have resided, worked, fellowshiped, and family shipped in the state of California. I have three daughters and one son, and they're all what I call prune pickers. Now, there is no such thing as a prune picker, because we all know that prunes are fruit that's been dried. But uh, we call our kids prune pickers because they're native Californian. My two daughters, Kimberly and Carla, were born in beautiful Burbank in the Burbank Hospital. My daughter Jamie was born in Fountain Valley, California, and my son, Wiley S. Drake Jr., was also born in Fountain Valley. So they all, three girls and my son, were born in California. I'm very proud to be a Californian. Let me tell you one of the reasons I'm proud to say I'm from California. Now, I know people say, well, California is the land of the shake and bake and fruits and nuts. We do have the best fruit in the world. We do have the best nuts in the world, physically speaking. And then we also have some other kind of nuts and some other kind of fruits that we just soon not have. However, we are very proud. I'm very proud to be a Californian. And when you go to the call to fall, you will see a map of the United States of America, and you can click on any state, and you can find out how many people have signed up. The whole United States is a million seven hundred thousand. But if you look at each state, you will find the number of people that are signed up for each state all across America. And when you get to the West Coast and you put your cursor on California, you will find that there are more people signed up for the call to fall 
in California than any other state. I am proud of that. I am proud that my state, where I live, where my kids were born, I'm proud that California is a state that believes in prayer. Oh, we may be liberal in some respects, and we are very liberal in prayer because we want to pray. So, go to your state, put your cursor there and click on it and find out how many people are signed up in your state. You'll find out places like Washington, D.C. only have a handful. You'll find some other states that have quite a few. But you will find that California is still in the lead. And for that, I am very proud of my state. And I thank the Lord that he has prompted people in California to join Call to Fall. Now, Family Research Council has asked us, those that are part of Call to Fall, those of us that are pastors and church members and teachers and preachers, Call to Fall, Brother Tony Perkins, Brother Pierre Bynum, the chaplain, General Boykin, Kenan Curran, other folks have asked us uh, to be a part of a very special day that's coming up. And this is another thing we have to be proud of and happy for. On June the 29th, which is the fifth Sunday, the fifth Lord's Day. We have five Lord's Days in June. One of my daughters was born in June on the 14th on Flag Day, and I'm so proud of that. I'm proud of it for two reasons. Number one, I'm proud of my daughter Kimberly. But I'm also proud that she was born on Flag Day because I'm so proud of old glory. And I'm proud of my daughter. And so they've asked us to join, though, on June the 29th. June the 29th, which is the fifth Sunday in the month, the fifth Lord's Day in the month. They have asked us to designate that as Call to Fall Sunday. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have Call to Fall Sunday. Well, we have Call to Fall Sunday every Sunday here. But on the 29th day of June, on the 5th Sunday of June, we're going to have a special, special Call to Fall Sunday. First of all, at 9.45 in the morning, we will have our Sunday school class on the call to fall. Brother Will Ruffin, my brother in Christ, and our Sunday school teacher will teach Sunday school at 9.45. And then at 11 o'clock, we will have our morning worship service. We'll do our call to fall and we'll do our morning worship service after we parade the Torah around the sanctuary and declare ourselves to be the first Southern Baptist Church in Messianic Fellowship, and we'll show that as we march the Torah through the synagogue, and we will praise the Lord on that day and have our worship service. And then at 12 noon, we will have on Call to Fall Sunday a great and glorious breaking of bread, and I'm not talking about just bread. We will have a great, great fellowship around the table, and if you're anywhere near Buena Park, California, Knott's Berry Farm, Hollywood, Disneyland, I would encourage you to join us for lunch. Lunch is on us. Come to the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship and join us for lunch at 12 noon. In the afternoon, we're going to have, the Lord willing, Aaron Swartzbart and the John 316 race car. 
motor gospel race car. Aaron Schwartzbart produced a video called Street Racer Music Video. Street Racer Music Video. Go to that. Look it up in Google. Street Racer Music Video. Look it up. And you'll see John 316, the race car that Aaron Schwartzbart drives in the races. The Lord willing, Aaron Schwartzbart and the John 316 car will be here on Call to Fall Sunday. We have also invited uh, some friends of ours, former gubernatorial candidate for California, Brother Robert, Dr. Robert Ornalis, who is one of the leaders of a group called SOG, Saints of God. They're a rap group. They travel around the country. They minister primarily to uh, Native Americans because Dr. Ornalis has a little Indian blood in him. And so he ministers to the Indians around the nation. Lord willing, SOG will be here with their singers and with their rappers. And by the way, a, a preacher will be here to preach, a fellow by the name of Bobby, Bobby Bibelstein. He changed his name to Bibelstein. He's a street preacher, and he'll be here to preach. He'll be walking up and down, preaching here at the First Southern Baptist Church and in Buena Park. We have invited other people to come as well. And we'll continue as we go on to invite people to come. I want to say to my representative, Ed Royce, if you're in town, if you're in the district on the 29th, we would welcome you to come and speak to our group. We're going to be singing. We're going to be preaching. We're going to be praying. And we're going to have a great call to fall time on that day. We're going to have a big jump house and a little jump house for the little folks. We're going to have a popcorn machine. We're going to have a snow cone machine. Uh, we're going to have uh, games for the adults as well as the kiddos. And we're going to have a great time on call to fall Sunday. I've invited Dr. Alan Key. I've also invited some other folks. Ted Hayes, a mighty man of God. I've invited him to come. I hope he'll be here. I've also invited other pastors and other preachers and other teachers. We would love for you to come. If you'd like to come and sing with us and sing for us, come on down. We're going to have a whole afternoon and evening by the way, we'll have supper again about 7 o'clock. And we'll have a great time together. We'll have a lot of guests. We'll have a lot of friends. We're going to have a great and glorious concert of praying, praising, and having a great time together. We're going to pray. We're going to praise. And we're going to clap our hands and stomp our feet. We're going to have a great, great time here at the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship in Buena Park. We're going to pray that call to fall prayer. We're going to ask that you will come and be with us and be a part of what we're doing here. We want to remind you that we're doing our best to do away with uh, welfare because we believe in church fair. We believe we ought not blame it on everybody else, but we ought to take advantage of everything that we have. Let's don't blame it on Bush. Do you hear us now?
Massachusetts. Can't wait this time to hear your same old dumb excuses. Do you hear us now? 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 Are you gonna believe us? Say we're trying to pull your chain These are the people's seats And we're gonna take them back Back somehow Do you hear us now? Do you hear us now? We've got a message that is loud and clear By the way, I want to remind you of an organization, not only the First Southern Baptist Church and not only Family Research Council, but I want to remind you of an organization called Operation American Spring. On the 16th day of May, we declared May Day, May Day, a nation in distress. If you'd like to find out more about May Day, and Operation American Spring, just go to OAS2014.com. OAS2014.com. Operation American Spring is a constitutional restoration of our nation. We've had people there in D.C. at Camp Liberty, there are people there right now. Some of them are on their way home. Some are still there. And there'll be more there in the days ahead. But whether there's a small number or a large number really doesn't matter. I know we talked about big numbers in the beginning, and we had big numbers for a while. But the bottom line is, folks, it doesn't matter how many is there. What matters is we must restore the United States of America back to constitutional control. You know, there are only 11 things that are listed, that are enumerated in the Constitution. Only 11 of them. And yet there are hundreds and hundreds of laws that have been passed that are absolutely unconstitutional. If they do not fall under the enumerated acts of those 11 things, then they belong to the local state. That's why we're so upset at what this current government is doing because they're violating over and over and over again. They're violating the Constitution. Go to Operation American Spring, OAS 2014, and find out what you can do. You can go there and file paperwork. We've put in over 20,000 copies of a threefold paper. Mm -hmm. The threefold paper basically says... These are our grievances, our demands, and the principles and, and uh, 
articles of impeachment go to Operation American Spring, OAS 2014.com. Go to that and check it out. Join us. You may not be able to go to D.C., but you can pray. We have boots on the ground and prayer in the air, and we would encourage you to go and be with us there. Boots on the ground or prayer in the air. Now, there's one other thing that I want to do before we go off, and that is there's a great battlefield that goes way back in our nation, and that is a battlefield called Gettysburg where Americans fought and died over the issue of race. It was called slavery. It was because of black and white. And on July the 4th, we are going to celebrate racial reconciliation on the Gettysburg battlefield where Abraham Lincoln gave his great Gettysburg address and where he said, men will not far remember what we said on this field, but we will all remember what happened on this field. For these men, more than 20,000 of them, died there to bring freedom to this nation. So, racial reconciliation is necessary. Now, there's a whole bunch of folk that think I'm a racist, and I'm not. I do not stand against Barry Satoro because he's black. First of all, he's not black. His mother was white. His dad, we're not sure who he was, but he is not a black man. And he's an illegal alien. On and on it goes. I'll not go into that today. But there are many people that uh, indeed call us racist, and we're not. I'm just a country singer. Maybe a little redneck in me. I've been chasing my rainbows. I still haven't caught my dreams. But all the names you have called me have pushed me far away I know you're not listening but I got some things I'm gonna say you call me a racist just because we don't agree but I listened to James David Manning that's my pastor and I voted for Alan Keyes Clarence Thomas is a great judge, no one smarter than Condoleezza Rice. It's not the color of your skin, it's all your freaking lies. Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley, one of their biggest fans. Lynn Swan of the Pittsburgh Steelers was my favorite player in the land. Bill Cosby is the funniest comedian. Yes, he is. That I have ever seen. So for you to call me a racist makes you sound like a racist to me. You call me a racist just because we don't agree. But I listen to James David Manning and I voted for Alan Keyes. Clarence Thomas is a great judge. No one smarter than Condoleezza Rice. It's not the color of your skin. It's all your freaking lies. There's a lot of good white folks. There's a lot of good black folks. All different nationalities make our country great. Yes, it does. It seems like you want to divide us. You're sure not trying to unite us. We're going to take back our great nation state by state. You call me a racist. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a racist. We are not a racist. The title of today's show is going to be, I'm not a racist. 
I'm not a racist. We encourage you to join us on the 29th day of June here at the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. We encourage you to join us in Gettysburg for racial reconciliation and the acknowledgement of our Day of Independence on the 4th of July. Join us there in Gettysburg. Join us here in Buena Park. And if you can't go to either one of those, you can always go to our communications channel. Our communication channel has a telephone number and an access code. That telephone number is 712-432-1690. The access code is 399-430-POUND. Join us on June the 29th and July the 4th or any other time. God bless you and have a great, great evening. Remember, our theme is do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God.